Hello, I'm Brian Brake, and I'd like to welcome you to the start of a project I'm calling The Peerless Gamer and The Peerless Games Twitch and YouTube streams. A uh, little background about myself, I've been a, a RPG fan and gamer since I was very young, like many of you. Uh, one of the first memories that I have is of playing a half-elf magic user fighter with my cousin and finding my first plus one short sword. Uh, in a dungeon, and uh, how many of you have found the floating shield in the dungeon uh, and, a, and a bit of goo that you didn't realize was a gelatinous cube and you tried to reach in and grab the shield? Uh, we've all been there at some point in our in our past, so um, I've also, you know, enjoyed choose-your-own-adventure games, uh, books uh, back in the 80s and 90s, <clears throat> as well as uh, a, a big fan of Magic the Gathering, uh, battle tech at high school, and when I joined the Navy, uh, found like-minded individuals to continue working. I've been uh, working on, I did uh, D and D three and a half, and also you know we we made handmade our dungeons and and our adventures and had a had a great time doing so. So, uh, part of the you know during the pandemic, like most folks, we we found a lot to do outside of our our normal work, and I found uh, things like. You know, actual play podcasts like High Rollers and Critical Role, and I also found some solo role playing stuff, and it kind of got me into the idea of the Choose Your Own Adventure games from back in the day. So, these, this game, this this series that I'm trying to do is a sci fi related series. Uh, as soon as campaign one is done, we may go to a fantasy campaign. We may uh, look at cyberpunk. We may look at something else. One of the things that got me into Ironsworn Starforge was the fact that it was so flexible. It uh, had co-op options, which I'll show you in the, in the video we've got coming up. But I was really, really happy with the, the options it gives and the, and the story-driven narrative for this. Um, so I've tried to break these down into more palatable videos, no more than 30 minutes at a time to kind of uh, spread out the... Uh, the, the work, I'm working with DaVinci Resolve on some of the overlays and some of the, the graphics and, and things. So uh, it's new to me and it's something I haven't worked with before. So I hope you'll uh, uh, be patient with me as my production values increase. And I'm hoping this will be interactive. Uh, we'll be able to do some short streams. We'll get people involved, uh, you know, use things like Patreon or, you know, polls or what have you to drive the narrative. I won't be the only person driving the narrative. You, the viewer, will be able to help out uh, in, in many ways. So um, I'd also like to thank Sean Tompkin and Tompkin Press for kickstarting Starforge, which, of course, I, I kickstarted. I was one of the supporters of Kickstarter. And uh, I, I want to remind you, you can get the free SRD of the game itself online at ironswornrpg.com. And you should see that right here or right here. Uh, depending on where I decide to put that on my DaVinci Resolve. So uh, I think we get started. Uh, the video that you've got here is one that I recorded earlier. Uh, I found uh, had some audio artifacts and issues with the uh, intro here, so I'm re-recording that. And so we'll go through, and I'll show you some of the books, the artwork, some of the tables, and then we'll get started with the trues uh, about the you know, how we, how we set up our galaxy, our, our, our universe in this case. And it, eventually as we go through, we'll do character creation. Then I'll get started with the actual game because one of the things you find out during this is the prep is the play, right? So I'm working through the prep part before we start campaign one. So uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks for everybody for watching. Uh, please leave a comment at the bottom. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell so that when I post up new content, it will be there. So, all right, now let's get underway. From my main screen, here's my dice. I have a, a GoPro hooked up. Um, as I said, I've done podcasting and streaming for about the last 10 years. I've got a nice three camera, set, or not three camera, but I've got a two camera set up with my, you know, with my, my camera there and my camera here. I've got a three a light set up. Um, I'm trying to make this kind of like uh, how other folks might do this, a little nicer. Uh, you'll see some jump cuts. You'll see some things like that. But I, I promise not to fudge my dice uh, because I understand that, you know, that 
breaks confidence. It also, you know, breaks the the illusion that I'm I'm not trying to doctor the game as we go along. I do have a couple of provisos that I want to do for the game to make sure that uh, I, there's a couple of things during the the lactic creation that I'm going to probably DM veto. Uh, we'll get to those as we go. So. Um, this is the front page of the PDF for Iron Sworn Starforge. Beautiful, beautiful art. Um, it really gives you the idea of what the future looks like. It's solitary. It's bleak. It's, you know, you've got, you know, a, a person and, and their drone, you know, that kind of thing. And you've got a long rifle. You've got a long gun. You're landing on what could be a planetoid or an asteroid with your you know, your ship, your trusty ship, you know, which I'm getting a, I'm getting a, like an old West vibe. There's a sword. I'm getting a, I'm getting a, a firefly kind of vibe. I'm getting a, a rough, rough future Western space, Western kind of thing. Uh, not the, the clean, uh, antiseptic Star Trek that, you know, I grew up with Star Trek, you know, enterprise, uh, Star Trek next generation, DS nine, those, uh, you know, uh, this feels like, oh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe she's had a little, uh, uh, the character on the screen, uh, you know, feels like, you know, they're looking for something. Um, they're searching for minerals or searching for things. There's obviously some life on this planetoid or asteroid. I, I love that feel. I, I, I think I want to believe the Star Trek, you know, Enterprise D next generation is the future where everybody's all happy and everything. But um, I, I feel is probably more along the lines of a Firefly or a Babylon 5, uh, or, um, you know, it's a bit more rough and tumble like, you know, Star Wars was on, the, you know, on Tatooine and stuff. Not everybody's, you know, people are still going to struggle. People are still going to eke out a life. You know, you're not going to be in Starfleet. And there may be organizations in my world that are very similar to that. Uh, you know, it might be the United Federation of Planets, but it might also be, you know, Blade Runner, where it's like Mega Corpse or like Alien and Predator, not with the the horror-y bits, not all of it. Wayland Katani, you would have your your Mega Corpse, you know, in, in that respect. So um, there's a couple of things that I'm hoping that I don't have to super veto. Um, you the, the the character creation and the galactic creation is is up to me, and I would like to trust the dice are going to give me something that doesn't suck. But I know that it's going to be ooh, okay, you know, give me that kind of thing. I do have a kind of an idea on where I want to go with things, but it could be that everybody's walking around with light, light swords and, you know, able to, you know, manipulate the fabric of reality. So um, I'm hoping it doesn't uh, get get that far. But so um, I, I'm actually proud enough to realize that I did kickstart this in 2021. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I got the preview edition. I actually, I think. Uh, I have the latest of versions. I think they were on drive through RPG. Uh, you know, there's a lot of information on here. The good thing about uh, Starforged is it's free. You can go to their website and you can pull down all the information that you need to play the game, uh, including the play kit, so character sheets, move reference sheets, sector maps, other worksheets, asset cards, uh, character sheet, which I actually haven't downloaded. I need to do that. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Um, there we go. Uh, there, there's a ton of stuff. Now, Sean Tompkin is also the person who wrote uh, Iron Sworn. So there's uh, the RPG for fantasy. Um, what got me was there's so much fantasy out there already. And I was like, I'd like to do some sci-fi. I know there's there's Traveler and there's things like Battle Mech and, or Battle Tech and, uh, you know, Warhammer and all that stuff. Um, but... And, you know, there's other 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 games, other like little mini games. There's also, um, I kickstarted the Mind Jammer group uh, a long time ago. So I've got a lot of the Mind Jammer stuff, which transhumanist future kind of stuff, which I'm entirely okay with too. And we might, some of it might be a hodgepodge, depending on how high up on the tech we get on the tech stack. Uh, we'll, we may have some of that. Um, so, yeah, you can... You can actually play, I think you could probably pretty much play the game with the information on here, or you can go to some place like DriveThruRPG and buy the books and support the artist or and support the the, the artists the who did the artwork, which is excellent artwork. 
and the author of the book, Sean. So, um, yeah, we're we're going to be doing some of this stuff. There's you know there's also delve, which is I believe some some Iron Sworn stuff as well uh, for dungeon delving. Obviously, <sighs> let's get started. So be beautiful artwork, uh, you know, digital edition, play testers and contributors. The the basics are in here. So they they tell you about the different modes of play, which I think is great. I'm gonna sh you know maximize this a little bit. Um, so they, they give you, you know, obviously this is one of the few games and systems. Again, you can play 5e with, you know, a maximum, I'd say of two people. There are numerous solo role play generators out there like mythic. Uh, there's definitely several solo RP, uh, products online where you can play fifth edition or pathfinder or what have you And the crunchier, the better, I think. So pathfinder may actually be better because there's a lot more tables and things involved. So uh, you have modes of play for this one. You can play guided, so you can play like a traditional TTRPG where you've got eight people around the table and you've got, you know, a uh, different dynamic and everybody's got their own character and they all share assets and what have you. Uh, you've got cooperative play, uh, which can also be GMless, right? So you can have four or five people around the table and everybody kind of contributes to the narrative. And when a decision is made, then you roll the dice kind of like me. Now, cooperative or solo play, I think, are probably very similar to one another, except I don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of. That may change in, in the future if somebody takes a note and goes, hey, I want to commit time to this and, and make it, you know, make it a thing. I'm more than willing to entertain people. Uh, you know, being the peerless gamer doesn't necessarily mean I'm without peer. It just means I'm, you know, uh, I don't have any friends or I'm without peer. So, um, in this case, uh, no guide is necessary. We're going to portray a lone heroic character. And for this, you know, if this was a 5e game, I wouldn't start out at a level one noob. Uh, you know, if we were building this out, it's going to be, I, and I'm, I'm not going to be level 20 grizzled veteran either. It'd be like, kind of like, uh, I would say you'd probably want like level five or six. You know, if, if I can be honest, I, I would say you're going to have a hard go at it at level one. And from what I've read and what I've watched on, you know, Reddit, the Reddit R, I think Iron Sworn, I think is what it's called, um, or R Star Forged, um, you tend to die a, a good bit on this. So um, there's there's a bit of trepidation there. It's like, what if I get through like, you know, session two and then I'm dead, right? Uh, what does that look like? How do I continue on? How do I, you know, continue playing if I have a dead character, right? And and the idea is I'm supposed to play as me, but when I die, am I supposed to be someone else? Or, you know, do I have a long lost son, daughter, you know, uh, clone? You know, if technology allows it, maybe I wake up and I'm in a wet, you know, tub of goo somewhere and I'm my clone, right? And I don't have any remembrance, kind of like a transhumanist kind of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, it says it's intended for solo or small group play, one to three players plus a guide. If that is playing in that mode is ideal. So yeah, sometimes DMs get bored, right? And they don't want to have to make content so they can play back and forth and, and fight one another. Rulebook is often to the perspective of a solo player, but basic approaches and rules are the same for co-op and guided play. So that's pretty awesome. Um, it seems like you don't you can play GM'd or DM'd director. I, I I'll probably say director, not GM or DM because. Um, game manager, dungeon manager. Uh, uh, I don't like using the the master term. So you know, we'll we'll go through that. So what do you need to play? We need two ten sided die. So I have two ten sided die. These are the challenge dice, and I have a six sided die, which is purple and old. I've had these since two thousand one. So it's it's good to be able to roll some bones once in a while. Uh, optionally, another 10-sided die to use as an oracle die. Um, uh, what I'll probably do for my dice is I'll use, you know, for the hundreds, you know, I'll, you know, I'll have those. But the red die is, uh, you know, it's a 6 instead of 60 in that case. So it would just be a 4 and a 6. And then the, the, the hundreds die will be the hundreds die. Um, I, can, I got plenty of dice. I mean, so I'm, I'm not hurting for dice. In this case, so um, uh, print and play materials. The asset cards. I think I showed them earlier. Here's the asset cards. They're they're very very. I think they're you can print them to the size of playing cards and then put them in card protectors. Or what I planned on doing was getting a deck of cards and then like 
taping them to that so they have you know some kind of um, structure so it's not uh, causing any kind of uh, uh, bending issues or you know I don't I don't cause them to be marked in any way so uh, and then the Starforged play kit a set of reference sheets and worksheets so I have those I have the play kit here's the truths workbook which we'll be working on a little in a minute uh, this is oh this is the one page book look at that that's beautiful look at that the iron sworn metal and you got you know, the the that I, I just love the art in the in the book so um, we're gonna get rid of these this is the reference guide so these are the oracles and codex and moves that you can have there's a number of different moves which I actually liked um, you know uh, and there's add-ons to this so I've I've bought weird uh, on RPG drive through RPG there's something called Star Sworn reddit they have star sworn 31 custom assets so you can expand the world so right now we're not going to be playing with those once we get through here you know they'll have other things but these are these are actually i think free as well you can go and look at those so they have alien um, i'm not an alien i I'm, I'm a fan of you know making sure that we're only aliens but you have skills and other paths um looks like cyborgs you've got skills you could be a hacker uh, training gunners, you know, places, paths, uh, martial arts, marksmen. So they had they had different things. So um, if you have magic in your world, things like are in your galactic uh, galaxy, uh, pyromancy, psychics, that kind of stuff. So, um, but that's that's kind of cool. Some things you can add on to that. Um, and uh, the the Discord and the Reddit are are quite good. Uh, they're 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 a uh, very positive community so far that I've found, and so you know you're gonna you're gonna learn that. So these are, I think yeah. So uh, there's a whole sheet of them, or you can do you know per card. So um, we're all yeah, everybody gets a starship. So you know those are things we'll run into at some point in the future. Uh, here's the character sheet that we downloaded, and I'm gonna delete that, and I'm gonna shut that off. All right. So uh, scheduling my sessions, you know, the idea is you can play as long as you want, 10 minutes to five hours or forever. You know, if you have enough people who can come over, you, you know, chips and dip and, you know, until the chips and dip run out. Um, so there, there's a ton of things you can do. And yeah, tone and inspiration is really based on the Truths workbook, which we'll go through here in a second. Um, and so, man, yeah, so you got like Mandalorian, Star Wars, Firefly, Dune. Oh, Dune. Dune's great. Uh, I actually... I actually like both of them for different reasons. Um, big fan of Kyle McLaughlin. Sir Patrick Stewart was in the original. Um, but the new one is good, too. Um, and I've read the books. I've read the, the first two books in the Dune series. So probably the only ones you need to watch. Oh, and I've, I've watched up to, like, season four of The Expanse as well. So there's some of that. Um, um, Battlestar Galactica, right? I mean, there's just so much sci-fi out there that you can pull from, right? You can even... I mean, if you really wanted to, things like Quantum Leap as well, if you really wanted to, you know, break that kind of barrier uh, in respect to that. Um, Stargate SG-1, I think some of, I, I want to I believe some of, of what's in here is inspired by, you know, things like Stargate and, uh, you know, a little bit of Star Trek, Firefly, Dune. I, I mean, obviously, yeah. So um, there, there's a bit more there, so. Um, all right, so this is this is the globular cluster, the void, uh, the forge, NSC eight four one two. I I was actually doing some research and found that there is this is seventeen hundred light years away from the uh, plane of the Milky Way. Um, you might call it north because you've got the the Milky Way plane, but it's up here, right? Um, I actually was doing some searching online and found that there is a ga a galaxy called Ursa Major Dwarf 2 that is 1,800 light years from the Milky Way. And I was like, oh, wow. I wonder if that was the inspiration or, or what have you. Um, this is a globular cluster, but that that is an, a, a galaxy uh, in, in that case. I don't know if they're the same size or anything like that, but it was just interesting to see uh, um, a, a parallel. I mean, there are 100 light years difference in the grand scheme of things, you know. So... Um, yeah, so there's, there it is, north of the galactic plane. So you've got the, and it's, I mean, they, they, they would call it a satellite. I think the Milky Way galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy has like 12 similar satellite clusters that like to, to hang out nearby. 
So um, here's the regions of the fours. You have the terminus, which is the closest to where they uh, the exodus happened. Uh, the outlands, which is you know the new the old frontier. The expanse is the new frontier, and then the void is anything could be in the void. And so um, we're gonna we're gonna go through that. So yeah, here's a globular cluster. Uh, 1700 light years above the galactic plane. The other thing I want I liked about um, some of the the stuff that I've done is this doesn't happen in in the soul system, you know. Um, I've read several that uh, this is very similar to another one that I uh, saw called Terracide. Uh, if you go look that one up on Drive Through RPG, Terracide, somebody destroys the Earth and there's like a hundred thousand humans left and you have to figure out how to survive and i was like oh that's that would be fun to play but then it was like okay i can't turn that into a system that works so um, but yeah so you know you've got a, a ton of stuff here uh, to talk about so um we're gonna they said you'll soon you'll learn more about the setting and decide the nature of your version of the forge by using the guided exercise starting on page 74. so um oh and i wanted to yeah here we go so um, here's, here's a, a down and dirty on, you know, fiction. You envision your situation, your intent. You will ask a question and based on that, you'll use mechanics to take action and resolve the outcome. And then you'll apply the outcome to the situation. There is a, a better flow chart around here. Here's the, here's the full flow chart. And this is, this is what kind of got me like, oh man, okay, this is great. So, and um, they also do tell you, you don't always have to pick a card. You can kind of do what's logical, but if you find yourself stumped, you can move on. So there will be some storytelling. There will be some, okay, now I've got to draw. The one thing I didn't want it to be was, you know, like five hour combat round, you know, five hour combat, like in, in more weighty games. Uh, and, you know, I've, uh, I'm, I'm just not a fan of that it just tends to drone on so you start by you know envisioning the current situation what your character is doing and i'll try to do that um and we'll, we'll see what happens there and then you ask a question or answer questions about the situation location or other questions or you can just ask the oracle right uh you know your action or current situation triggers a move make that move um, you'll roll your dice and then depending on the outcome what happens next or you know what do you do so the what happens next means if a weak hit or a miss that means i don't control the outcome with a strong hit i get to control the outcome and, and figure out what happens so i'm firing my phasers and i hit a, i get a strong hit so i get to i get to you know build the narrative here whereas if it's a weak hit i'll either follow the instructions on what happened on the card to you know add to the narrative or something bad happens and then I have to, you know, uh, narrate that accordingly. And so, you know, this is the flow chart, which I think is great. And we will use that uh, many, many times referring back to it. So, 